Hi, this is Bob Bellerman, CTO Bob, and today we'll be answering some of the questions people had. I got a couple of emails saying that we had covered a 640 in the past, it was an R640, and then I was told um, that I'd gone too low with a T330. So this is the in-between, this is a 440, in this case it's a tower-based, so this is a T440 from Dell, it's a power edge. Uh, this is a dual processor, we'll see in a moment as opposed to the T30 that we did last time that was a single processor. Um, no matter what's in this box, you can pick the CPU, the memory, the uh, RAID controller, the drives. So it's obviously it's like a Lego system. You get to build it the way you want from Dell and it comes uh, right out of the box the way you set it up. So let's go ahead and open this one and let's take a quick look. Make sure that if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and please encourage us, subscribe to this channel down below. Really appreciate it. Helps us out a lot. So let's go ahead and open the box. They are big boxes, so I would suggest that uh, you have a friend help you, or a co-worker. And when you order this, if you do not order a keyboard or a mouse, you won't get one. So you really get what you order, and that goes all the way to the uh, two power cables. So first we'll look at the accessories that we've ordered with it. So we ordered a few things. We ordered some licenses. So we have some uh, windows and some clients, uh, they call it CALS, client access licenses. So those are in the box as well. Those are OEM versions. And they will be used to install our virtual machines later on. And we have the front bezel. The front bezels are quite nice, and there is a key, so don't throw out the key accidentally, and the front bezel, of course I'm holding it upside down, so that's what goes in the front, so these are Dell EMC branded bezels, and as I've mentioned, you're going to have two power cables. Since so I ordered two, because I have a dual power supply on this particular unit. Now, don't expect instructions in case you're new to servers. There's nothing in here on how to set things up. There's no, uh, it's very, very little documentation. Most people order servers, they already know what they're, they're ordering it for and they know how to set it up. Uh, in our case, we actually got the, uh, the VMware. So we're going to have a VMware, uh, probably version 7, installed on here. And then we're going to put some Windows 2019 server standard on top of that as VMs. So as you can tell, the, the server itself is well packed. A lot of foam. This is direct from the factory. So here we are. As you can, First thing you can tell is the number of drives on this unit. You're going to have... If you select the two and a half drives, you're going to have 16 of them. So you've got two banks of eight. The drives are quite easy to put in and take out. In this case, they are uh, Intel e Dell EMC branded SSDs. And this one here has a RAID 5 on it. And you simply push it in, clip it in, and that's all there is to it. So lots of room for expansion. It's great. There's really nothing else in the front. Uh, you're going to notice the on off button is very small. This is on purpose so people don't go and accidentally press on them. The other thing that we have is a little tab here which I don't want to show the serial number but basically the serial number and everything is on this little plastic tab here. It is also if you order the iDRAC, the enterprise version, that will have the password for the iDRAC. And the iDRAC is a remote management solution. It allows you to go in and close the server, change the RAID configuration, update the different firmwares. All of those things can be done directly through that. It's basically a computer on a, in a computer. So let's go ahead and look. This is the side that we open, which we'll open in a moment. And in the back, we have some more configuration or configurable rather uh, components. There's no cards in it right off the uh, 
get-go. This is with the default two cards. These are gigabit cards. Generally we'll add some 10 gigs, uh, gigabit cards, whether they're uh, fiber or through copper. The power supplies, I very strongly suggest getting a dual, even if you're going to get smaller ones. These are the 495 watts. And of course this has to do with what processors you have, how much memory, how many drives. Generally I like the 750s. When it's smaller projects you can go with smaller power supplies. And these are quite easy to take in. If one breaks, the server will continue to run. And to replace it, a hot swap, you simply put it in, and that's all there is to it. So that's quite simple. Let's take a quick look at the inside. I think you'll find that there's a lot of real estate on the inside. And it looks an awful lot like T330 that we looked at. This, of course, being a tower, it will compare better to what we were doing. Um, this is actually locked, so I'm going to go ahead and unlock it with a screwdriver. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the inside. They do have some diagrams on the inside, in case you're curious how to set up RAM and processors, how to insert them. So they have good instructions inside this lid. What we're seeing on the inside are the main components. So what we'll find, of course, is the RAID controller. This one here is an, uh, an H740P. And this has eight gigs of RAM. There's a battery on there that you can see. So it keeps its configuration. Now if we just simply slide this out, what this will unveil is the processor. So in this case, this machine could be upgraded to get a second processor. And we can also see the memory. So you can see all the memory slots here. In our case, we have two 32 gig. If you have additional cards, you basically just put them in here. As you can tell, the um, the RAID controller is using one of the slots. So this plastic that I just took out really is there for the ventilation. It's taking the airflow. As you can tell, there's a big fan in the back, so there's always good air on the memory and the CPU, because those are the, the parts you want to keep as cool as possible. Now, if you were to take this to its extreme, uh, with this front configuration, you can go up to 61 terabytes, uh, according to Dell. And occasionally, just by increasing or getting the newer firmware, you can uh, get some additional functionality along the way. Sometimes they'll release the specs for the machine when it's released, and as they go along, they'll change the firmware, and with new drives, new memory, new other things that they could increase, new processors, sometimes you'll find that you could have uh, specs that are actually exceeding the original specifications for the server. So in this case, we'll have VMware, we'll have uh, two uh, network interface cards in the back. Now, choose really the minimum. What you're going to do in the case of VMware is you're going to have one for the VMware management and you're going to have another one for your virtual machines. Uh, generally, I advise using four, like a, a quad card instead of a dual card, and that usually adds to the existing two depending on the model. And if you're going fiber, they also have dual and quad in different models by different manufacturers. There's Intel, Emulex, there's quite a few of them. And uh, traditionally, I think some of the least expensive ones, for those of you who want to know what they should get, there's the Broadcom, which is very popular. And you'll see it right there in the configuration. So this is the Power Edge T440. It's a great workhorse. I expect these things to last a long time. I see a lot of people that retire these not because they're broken, but more because they want to have more speed with the newer systems. So it's a great unit to use for overall for the, the smaller offices. This is obviously uh, has the capability of having a dual processor that increases the number of cores. Again, you can go for silver, gold, or platinum processors by Intel in this unit, and it will give you, you know, have 20, 30, 40 cores if you need. And you could also, from a gigahertz point of view, from the speed per core, you can opt to have more gigahertz per core and have less cores. So depending on what you're running, some applications will benefit more from faster frequencies than by the number of cores. If you're gonna do something like SQL, you're more likely to need more cores rather than faster cores. So again, you have to adapt. 
So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please leave messages below.